Hello, I remember way back when I did a video replacing the screen on one of these and I did want to do a side-by-side -side comparison of a old screen with a new screen with two copies of Shinobi and I couldn't do it because this one had conked out. Just to show you what happens by the way, you turn them on, Oop, it was on was it? See it goes like that, I'm dead, I'm dead. And then you think oh maybe it's uh, batteries, you change the batteries, still dead. So what I thought I would do is try to repair this. But I don't have a capacitor kit and maybe if I just sort of randomly start changing some capacitors we could figure out which one it is that's actually causing the trouble here. So maybe there's some low hanging fruit if you've got a dead one you might not have to change everything. So let's get inside. So our first challenge of course is to get past the security screw here. I found this in my random box of things, a specific tool for it. <laughs> I don't know why I own this. I'm wondering if, you know, some other machines use it, Super Nintendo. I feel it's not something I'd have bought just for this, but maybe I did. Who knows, there's a lot of rubbish scattered around here. So, work your way through all the screws. Success. Ooh, look at that. This is a fresh one. Untouched by human hands. And you can see these here, all these little things here are capacitors. And they're actually in a, I can't, I can't to describe it, like a plastic, a plastique enclosure. So you can see it's a regular electrolytic capacitor, but in a little plastic thing that I guess turns it into surface mount. I'm gonna start looking, see what values these could be. Okay, so I had a look here and I can see a lot of 100s written on things. So I can go, is this 100 nanofarads? And luckily enough, I do have some 100 nanofarads. I was searching around, so I've got a few hundred and a few ten. Now, just uh, just to be totally transparent, I have ordered a kit just now, literally once I looked in, go, oh, there's a lot of caps. I kind of forgot how many there are in these. So I have ordered a kit anyway, but I do like the idea of avoiding having to do it. So I think we'll just continue on. And I'm just going to start re removing some of these. Now, it does have power. It's just turned off. And you can see there, we've, we're going to go for this C49, and I will zoom in, just purely because it says it has 100 on it. <laughs> I think that might be 100 nanofarad. That'll be the one I'll replace. And then I'm worried looking at it, it says 104. Does that 100 nanofarads at 4, four volts? I mean, it doesn't really matter. Like we said, we have an actual kit coming up. And either way, we're gonna to have to remove all of these. So there you go, that was easy to remove. You see what I did there? I just put a bit of solder across the two pins and I have this nice chisely shaped bit, or soldering tip, I guess it's not really a bit, and uh, it worked fine. So here's the uh, replacement. And what I'm gonna do is use some snips. And we're just gonna cut it straight off the bar here. I'm just eyeballing it because this is the negative lead here. You can see it's got that white band there and then obviously the other side is positive so it's going to go around this way in the device but I'm going to try to just step it so if you imagine what that package <laughs> if you wanted to you could probably pull this out of the package and uh, try to fit one in if you go on exactly the same size which we don't but you can see what we're trying to emulate we're trying to just get this and then bend it over in such a way like that so that it's very similar footprint and I'm just going to splay these a little bit like so, and just give them a little haircut. You can see, pop them around there, ready to go. And then using my tweezers, I'm just gonna solder it in. It's one, one leg and then the other. I mean, it's not really a bad job, is it? I mean, I've seen some pretty awful looking repairs, but there's really no excuse for them to be awful. Now, so we've replaced one thing. Does that do the trick? The moment of truth. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. So there's a little cheeky 100 here too. Let's try that one. Now this one looks particularly cheeky because it's hard to get to. And interesting, that one says 106. This one said 104. Hmm. Maybe I'm reading these wrong. Oh well, let's keep going anyway. <laughs> Does it matter? It's all. Does it matter when it's all capacitance at the end of the day? Probably. 
Right, this one's a bit tricky because it's in there and my tip of my soldering iron... Oh, that's a bit... It was a bit naughty, but we got in there. Wasn't pleased. Right. So that's the 106. This is kind of a doc documenting my uh, potential failure too. So when it comes to fixing this all up again, if, if I have to, at least we know what values came out and from where. So this one, I've not really done the dog leg thing right now because I, I don't really have that much room. So I want to keep these as long as possible. Uh, eyeballing it up, I think I can trim about four mil off. I'm going to go for the old four mil trim. And let's be a little bit careful here. Oop. You know what? Maybe I'm making a mistake here. I think I could have dog legged those. Now, I'm just going to press that last. Again, tweezers, good tweezers, are essential. Look at that. Look how much e how easier it is with the good tweezers. And I've seen a lot of repairs that look like this, actually. I'll show you what I mean where the capacitors are sticking up like that. Compared to that, you can see that that is definitely the better technique. Um, one of the reasons is now you can't really bend this over without potentially damaging the PCB. The only way, maybe, if you could get tweezers underneath like this to take the strain and then just bend it around. And that did work, but yeah, probably risk damaging the capacitor. Let's try it again. Nope, that didn't fix it. I was looking around the board for another few 100s and I could see these here. So let's see if we can get to them. Yes, we can. There's three of them actually. So let's see if we can attack those. You can see they're a different type of package for surface mount. So we might have to use a different technique. And I'm just going to heat one end and see if I can upend it and then flip it. A little bit of solder will help. Let's get in there. Let's see if I can do it by hand. Oh, nope, that wasn't great. <laughs> that took the uh, pad with it. That's a bit naughty. Let me show you that. That didn't work out well at all, actually. That's going to require a little bit of work. So if you're doing this at home, I think the correct way to do it would likely to be get hold of a hot air blower. And I've not got mine with me right now, so I'm gonna keep trying this very nefarious technique. I'm going to apply a lot of heat now and just keep it on there for a while. I don't know. Oh, 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 yeah. Let that side cool down and then I'm going to heat from the other side again. Might be hard to see. See, it wants to come off. Come on. But yeah, with a bit of patience, I think. Yeah, that's not too bad. Again, it's trying to peel that positive leg, so be careful. It's, that is not very nice at all. Naughty. The bizarre thing is, I don't remember these being that tricky. There must be a lot of broken game gears because of that. I'm not going to lie, I've taken a few things apart and I, I, I admit I might not be the most careful. You know, because you, unfortunately, familiarity does bring contempt. This genuinely is an interesting conundrum here. Are they actually, it's because they're a through hole device. Am I losing my mind here? Hang on. Are these surface mount or what? Are they through hole? Let me clear this out of the way. What am I looking at here even? Oh, I see. So they have little legs. And that's what you see on the PCBs. There you go. So they are, they are not through hole. We're just seeing the leg pulled through. Just to show you, look, that's the leg. 
that attaches to the pad and that goes that away. Okay, I did it. I'm not proud of what I had to do, <laughs> but we got there. So you can see I've laid them out flat and I have basically bent the legs in an appropriate way so they're not straining the pads anymore. And they're sitting quite nicely, nice and flat, so they shouldn't be in the way. So we're just gonna pop on that ribbon cable back again. It's a bit of a tight squeeze, just like that. And again, are you ready for the moment of disappointment? Oh, I really felt it might come on. I can see a flicker actually. It is flickering at least. <laughs> I found some floor sweepings here. I've got a 35 it looks like and maybe, is that a 20? No, that's a 33 and that's a 22. I've got a couple of those and we'll see if we can find a place to put them on this board. Okay, these two are in. Let's see. Oh, no. Now, I don't want to excite you too much, but check this out. I managed to change yet another one, right? But this time, and I did admit I tested it off camera. I didn't share it with you, but I'll share this with you now. I don't know if you saw that. It actually tries a bit longer and every now and then you can actually see. There you go. Do you see that? Oh, oh, it's trying. I hope I can find some more capacitors on the floor. So this one here is a 68. Now I'm pretty sure I don't have a 68. So I'm just going to change it with a hundred and see what happens. And I've noticed they are glued down. That's why you get that little click sound. So make sure you are applying heat to those legs when you do that, because when it does kick, it might uh, rip the whole pad off. I'm not going to go with that. It's all oh, this is a big guy. Yeah, it will fit fine. I'm just going to mark it in place and just snip it. Snip, snip. Right, orient it back again. In you go. Gosh, I wonder what will happen now. I'll have to, if this works, I'll probably have to cancel my Sega Game Gear recapping kit because I don't have any more Game Gears to recap. And after people watching this video, they certainly won't want me to recap theirs for them. Boom. Right. Is it going to work? Ready? Oh, I don't know. I feel... <laughs> it's like we're close. I bet if we had the LCD screen in, it, as in the mod, you know, the t modern TFT screens, they use a le lot less juice. It might just fire up. It wouldn't put as much strain. So, oh, these are tents. I do have tents. Okay, I'm a bit worried. I can smell a smell. I can smell a weird fishy PCB smell. Ooh, look at that. So let me show you how far we got to get to this point. And that was replacing these ones here with the 10 microfarads, but it's still not particularly reliable, right? So I would su suspect if I could change those, it would be great. And of course that was supposed to be a 60 and I only had a hundred, so mm, something smells like it's getting hot and fishy and disgusting. So it's going on, right? Let me waft it. Mmm. Old circuit smell. I think it's from here. You can hear it running. Hmm. Yeah! Okay, smell aside, which does seem to have abated, um, I have put it back together-ish and just wanted to show you, uh, I'm going to ignore the smells basically. Um, 
Maybe I'll just put some, look, there you go, PCB cleaner. We'll pretend that's done a job here. Look, we've cleaned our PCB and we're going to ignore the smells because we've got my £10 kit coming anyway. But what um, I'll just want to show you here, we had to move these capacitors out of the way because these gold pads here are where things touch on this side. So make sure your bits and bobs don't go in there. But what's cool about this, it does mean we can put it back together and I think it is repaired enough to actually satisfy the original requirement when that was for me to compare this screen to a replaced one. And actually, I suspect after we see the comparison, I'll be ordering another screen and just yanking this one out. I did like the idea of having a completely unsullied, unmodded one, but now that I've gone in here and actually changed a few of the caps, it's like literally who cares? There's no point trying to keep it original. Finally, it's been a long time coming. <laughs> you can see I've got Shinobi now in both. The right hand side is a uh, one I've done with a TFT screen and it, this item does not work. I can't remember what's the name of that shop in Detroit where I bought these from. Anyway, Retro Taku, is that the name? Uh, I'm going to try to turn them on simultaneously. I don't know if I want the light on or off. I'm guessing on. Let's go with on for now. And I'm going to try to do it simultaneously. I'm going to turn the switches on, wherever they are. There we go. And then I'm going to move away quickly. Ready, set, go. <laughs> no comparison at all. You can hardly see that one. And I'm just looking through the camera. Oh, probably should have turned the volume down. Let's turn the old volume down. <sighs> That is surreal, actually, seeing them. It's so, it's like night and day. I mean, light off, oh yeah, the light off is a bit better. So let's push start on each. Oh, <laughs> that one is so washed out. It's unbelievable. Now, I don't know if, I, maybe if I put one on top of the other, we might be able to do a little bit of a zoom. Oh no, this one's died, what happened? Oh, no. That's it, it's game over, guys. I'm not sure we can <laughs> continue. Let's, let's hope it survives long enough that we can do some sort of comparison. Also, I need to figure out what's going on here. Obviously, the battery uh, circuit is w worried somewhat. There we go. Look at that. So, basically, definitely upgrade your screen if you've been considering it. I don't think it's worth keeping one original. It really is pointless. But also, I suppose... Are we considering that fixed? I know it's a little bit unreliable right now, um, but technically you can fix it with stuff you've got lying around through trial and error. But I think ultimately the problem with these is those components have failed altogether and it's cumulative. So there's not one single capacitor that we've had to change. We've had to really change a bunch of them. And I know I haven't had exactly the right values, but I suspect you just get away with it. If eventually you'll probably change enough of them and it will start working. And the fact is, it is working, let's be fair to it. But when that £10 kit comes, I will change that. But before I change that, I might as well order another one of these. And I'll probably try to link to a video down below. And you can see, when I did that, I changed it to this glass uh, screen as well, which is definitely worth doing. So yeah, there you go. Hopefully that's been of some interest to you. Please like, share, subscribe if you're that way inclined. Oh. I was going to say thanks for watching, but look at this. This is interesting. Different DC Jack. Thanks for watching. <laughs> bye bye.